Doc Walker has grown to be one of Canada's most popular country bands over the last 20 years. They've won multiple Canadian Country Music Awards and a Juno for Best Country Album. Now their latest album, Weathervane, is inspired by hometown pride, fond memories of youth, and a renewed appreciation for what Doc Walker calls home. Today, Shaw TV spends a day with Chris and Dave back in their hometown of Portage La Prairie. This is Doc Walker, Stories from the Heartland. This old car is turned from red into rust. This old car dreams of the old house. Bus's name is Ruby. We bought her from uh, a company out of Calgary. Um, we had an old MCI bus that we bought and we took all the seats out of it. We didn't have time to build uh, bunks or anything, so we just put mattresses <laughs> down on the floor. But they were spring mattresses, so we, just picture a 40 foot empty bus and like eight mattresses. So it, you'd, you'd wake up in different spots because you're like playing bouncing. bumper cars in the middle of the night. This old town, it still runs we used that bus for a long time and then we ended up uh, buying this one. I like this bus because a lot of different buses have smaller front lounge. This one has a really small back lounge, which nobody goes to anyway. We're a band that gets along too, which is, you know, that's... Uh, Sometimes. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Which is kind of great. I remember uh, there's a few bands that come on here and it's just like, where do you get away from everybody? It's like, like you don't. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the main thing that's really kept us together and, and kept the music flowing is, is, for one, Dave and I having the relationship of like brothers, where there's really no holding back. I mean, yeah, we have, we know each other well enough when it's time not to talk to each other and when it's time to actually say something to each other, but we have no problems with saying, eh, like if he has an idea of her, I have an idea for a song or something like that, and we're like, we don't really like it or we want to change direction, there's no problem at all saying, yeah, eh, what if we did this? No being overly uh, polite or politically no. correct sometimes. Even though I may be falling apart, whoa, it's been a beautiful life. Doc Walker's breakout hit, Rocket Girl, was a staple on their set list in the early days, performing in bars like the Palomino Club. She said, I got this hat in California From a man on the street whose name was Joe Have you ever been to California? Well, you really Rocket Girl, we didn't write Rocket Girl. But yeah, the way we got it sent to us is we, we got this new manager, uh, and he also managed, managed Jason McCoy. He had an extra song on, on the, the record that had Born Again in Dixieland, and it was called Rocket Girl, and it was kind of this obscure song, and we, we, heard, it, we heard it on a cassette tape, we listened to it, and we, we thought, wow, he's an idiot. <laughs> that's, that's a great song. And I just say, Hey, where are we going today, Rocket Girl? Tell me what life is like past that city limit sign. Dream your dreams in my ear, baby. Just get me out of here. Fly me around this world, Rocket Girl. Well, she said, have you ever been to Alberta? A wheat fields as far as you can see. Have you ever seen the prairies? And I remember when we first started going to Nashville, we got in trouble from the management for, we'd go right with writers and we would be like, you know, we'd like to do something a little unique along the Eagles, CCR. You know, they were like, oh, you got to be commercial. I'm like, well, we want to be commercial, but we still want to be unique and different. And in Nashville, that's not a, you know, that, that was a pretty bad thing back then. It's like, you got to conform, conform, and we never did. So when we heard Rocket Girl, well, we were excited because it didn't sound like anything we'd ever heard before. It was just a really cool little story song. 
So even recording Rocket Girl with Joel Feeney, um, you know, we didn't go, wow, this is going to change our career. It's going to be a big radio hit because it, it, we didn't think it was even going to be released to radio. Well, I'd never tell her that she's been busted. I know she's never been anywhere just like me But it makes her feel like Cinderella And I get to see the world for free And I just say, yeah, where we going today, rocket girl Tell me what life is like Past that city limit sign Dream your dreams in my ear Baby, just get me out of here And fly me around this world and Fly me around this world Rocket girl Here we are in uh, our hometown, Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, where... 9th Street. Is this yeah. 9th Street? I don't know. I think it is. This is sort of uh, the birthplace of, I wouldn't say Doc Walker, but... This is pre-Doc Walker stuff. Yeah, Dave and I, when we were younger, this is where we had our first rehearsal. Backdrop, right? We had a backdrop yeah. and everything before we had anything else. Yeah, before we learned, ever learned a song, we had a backdrop, a band name. Oh, it was called Freedom. Saskatchewan Avenue. Boy, we walked up and down here forever. <laughs> and then when we got our license, we'd drive up and down. Yeah, you drive up and down. You drive all the <laughs> way down, turn around, turn around at 7-Eleven. And then go to the other 7-Eleven, turn around. Yeah, it was the 7-Eleven run <laughs> all night. Oh man, I worked here. It's my first job. You know, I had it in my head. Actually, the, a funny story is my sister worked there. She got me the job, but my mom had worked here. And then my, I got my brother a job here, so the whole family had worked here. But it was called Franco's at the time. I thought, you know, I had a big plan where I was hired as a dishwasher and I worked my butt off. And I thought, man, if I wash dishes super duper fast and super duper well, I'm going to be pr promoted to cook. <laughs> but it kind of backfired because they thought, we can't lose this dishwasher. He's no, too he's good. too good. <laughs> My brother lent me $2,000 right after he got out of high school to That's buy a, a money Gibson Les Paul guitar, and it was gorgeous. But I owed, you know, I owed him $2,000, so I had to go and get a job making pizzas. So we made a certain amount of pizzas every night, and I made a certain amount of money at $4.30, an hour. So I figured I had to make just over 10,000 pizzas to pay for that guitar. That's crazy. <laughs> By 2008, Doc Walker was making a name for themselves, including sold-out shows at the Burton I'm Cummings Theatre. I'm gonna make you love me And I'm gonna keep on trying Until I can make you love me I think we're, we're always, even more, more so lately, we're always talking about what steps to take and with the way the music industry has changed so much around us in the last 20 years, we're lucky enough that we have a repertoire of songs that we can probably tour for a long time. But that's really not what we're what we're about. Like we even talk about that now when we, I mean, for this interview, we, we talked about it. We were, we're going to play Beautiful Life, and we end up playing Rocket Girl. But we don't want to be the band that plays Beautiful Life and Rocket Girl all the time because we have so much more to say. I just can't sleep. We've been lucky enough to release 10 albums and have enough songs that on radio that they play of our it's gold, called the gold rotation gold yeah. rotation which is they just play the old songs yeah. and stuff like that so we really don't have to come up with the new stuff but we we have stuff we, we have something to say we have something to say still <laughs> i'm gonna keep on trying until i can make you love me 
There's never been anything I wanted so bad You gotta know I'm never gonna stop Till I have you, baby It might sound crazy But I'm gonna make you love me Well, I slipped a love note under your front door. I wrote it all down straight from my heart, like a song in my head that I can't stop singing about you. I can't live without you. So I'm going to change your mind. I'm going to make you love me. I'll keep on trying I'll keep on trying Until I can make you love me There's never been anything I wanted so bad You gotta know I'm never gonna stop Till I have you, baby It might sound crazy But I'm gonna make you love me I'm gonna change your mind I'm gonna make you love me. This was sort of my first taste of, of big concerts when I was young. We played the Strawberry Festival. They had a stage set up about two blocks down that way. And in front of the sand store. In front of the sand store. And I guess they figured they were gonna get maybe at 5, the most, yeah. well, no, I thought they, they were thinking like 1,500. Oh, yeah. It was us and Double Eagle, the Prairie uh, Country Band, and April Wine. And we get on stage early because we were just starting out. So I think it was like three, four o'clock when we played. And I looked down and I'm like, whoa, there's lots of people here at like three in the afternoon. And then Double Eagle went on. By the time April Wine went on, there was over 25,000 or 20,000 people on the street in Portage Prairie. More people than in, in all of Portage. All right, here we are at my high school, which was your elementary. I went here in grade six. This was Prince Charles School, which is, uh, I think both these schools actually burned down at one, one time. And then they rebuilt my school, Prince Charles, and they, uh, they didn't make it with windows. Yeah. <laughs> they thought it would be distracting to the kids, so yeah. very, very uh, old school. So this is where we went to PCI, Portage Collegiate Institute. And funny enough, I just did a, they asked me to do a, well first they said, hey, do you want to say a few words at graduation this year? I'm like, okay. Well, I get there and I was the keynote speaker, which. <laughs> Math, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For that better. <laughs> yeah, so no, it was, uh, so I just went up there and talked about music and, and uh, told the kids to stay in school and not to jump in a van and travel around for five years living off Mr. Noodles. That was my, uh, my philosophy. <laughs> A lot of good times. We used to, we, one of our first times playing on stage in front of people was actually here at, they called them Lits. Yeah, I used to be in different rock bands and stuff and I would go, Doc Walker would always close the show. And I wasn't in the band yet, so I'd play my crappy rock songs and then they'd come out and play me some mountain music and all the kids, ah! <laughs> And I'd be like, move your guitar, Dave. I gotta, I'm like, oh, I gotta barf. <laughs> It's a short 20-minute drive from Portage to Westburn, Chris's hometown, and his recording studio that once was his elementary school. Whoa, Wendy! Yeah, here we are, the, uh, my old school that we turned into a studio. All right, uh, my elementary school, I lived next door, so it was a whopping two-minute walk. Um, <laughs> I think that was grade But it was uphill both ways. It so. was, yeah. That was grade four to six. So you never saw that part of it. Never saw that part. <laughs> Principal's <laughs> office. This was kindergarten, I think, and that was one to three. So we all went to school up here. And we're going into the library now, which is now the studio. This soundboard here, we found it in Nashville. When we lived in Nashville, we were moving home, so I came back and I got all my stuff. And we threw that in the, in the trailer and brought it home and took about 10 guys to get it in here. 
and about two weeks to figure out how to turn it on. I mean, I, I've recorded in studios my whole life, but it, it, you know, it, was, it took building one to realize that those guys work way, way harder than I do. Westburn Old School Studios, when we went out to school here, the coolest thing, if you were good, I never got to ring the bell because I was always bad, but for lunch, you know, there was no outside, you had to go outside and it doesn't really work that well. Oh there, isn't that annoying? And you're a kid, you just sit there and go. It's our first recording contract, you know, when you, <laughs> you get in the industry, you think, can't wait to sign a record deal. There's going to be limos and it'll be in LA. Our first record deal was a distribution deal in 19 or 2001, October 26th. And it was signed at the Travel Lodge in Regina. <laughs> Universal facts. Uh, yeah. Rush. Holy moly. I know. Jeez. Had, had to get it done. But that was our first record contract. This is a cool one here. This is our Juno. And that's, they don't make them like that anymore. No, being Canadian is beautiful life, country recording of the year. It's dusty, I gotta clean it off, but yeah. Juno's wow, they're pretty cool. Like the Canadian Grammy. So down here was where uh, we'd have crafts and do stuff, so, you know, like when you're kids, you go downstairs and you got to play dodgeball and have fun. Of course, we turned it into a bar. You have to do that. You know, when we talk about streets and, and life in small towns and heart of the heartland, you know, between Westburn and, and Portage, that's where a lot of the inspiration, and it, you know, we've traveled across Canada back and forth a hundred times. And it seems every small town we play, you know, it's like the names on the, the businesses are different, but it's pretty much the same story. And uh, that's why with with this record, Weathervane, I, I really, really hope when people hear it, they, they hear a bit of home. You know, and they hear what we grew up at too, so. There's a storm rolling in like a freight train Where their veins spin around Just some more bad news For a town that could use a little help right now Cause there's always someone leaving Yeah, we're slowly bleeding out Forget the good old days It's minimum wage or nothing now But my roots run deep in these broken streets and alleyways Like no other place Just to know where town on an open plain Miles away from anything It's where I was born and raised I can still hear mama call my name Oh, mama, here I am In the heart of the heartland What does home now mean to the view? Uh, well, with kids and family, home is where they are. You know, I think we could live anywhere. I mean, I love it here. I grew up here. My parents, you know, grew up here and their parents grew up here. But, you know, even whether we were in Nashville or, you know, where we are now, that I think once you have a family, home is, is where they are. So. But I just like it here because it's quiet. And a story down every street. It would take a whole other lifetime to relive the long line of memories. Just to know a town on an open plain, miles away from anything. But it's where I pitched that perfect game. Can still hear mama call my name. Oh, mama. the heartland 
just an nowhere town on an open plain Miles away from anything It's where I was born and raised Can still hear mama call my name Oh, mama, here I am In the heart of the heartland In the heart of the heartland